live in. That, that's your physical address. But your second address is at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. Woo! So quit pretending like God's way out there beyond the stars and all the heavens in a place far, far away. No. No, if, if you have faith to believe, He's sitting beside you. <laughs> if nobody's sitting beside you this morning, He's still sitting beside you. If somebody's sitting beside you this morning, they're a born-again believer, He is sitting beside you. Because they're in, well, are you going... That, that's why we're supposed to treat everybody with love and mercy. Particularly in the church, we're to prefer one another. Because we come to recognize that we are not just flesh and blood any longer. Paul says we're not to look at anyone in the flesh anymore. But to look at them through the Spirit. So when I look at people and when you look at people, particularly and especially believers, we're not to look simply at their physical appearance. We're not to look at them based upon what the world judges as beauty or ugly. As the right kind of body like mine or the... <laughs> as, as short or tall... Because it's the spirit, we, we, don't, we don't worry about skin color, nationality, culture. Why? Because all those are natural things. They didn't come out of the spirit. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things as long as all those things are lined up with the things of the kingdom. The problem comes... When we're not, oh, how would you know where I was going? Because I did not even put it on Facebook. We have got to come into alignment with the things of the kingdom. Because we are now kingdom citizens, kingdom servants. We're kingdom kids. I'm not afraid of the word kingdom. I know it's not all now. I don't live in that extreme kingdom teaching to where everything's supposed to be like Jesus is already ruling on earth. That doesn't happen till he comes back. And yet Jesus also said that the kingdom was in us and all around us and that we were to look to the things of the kingdom and I can choose to draw life out of the natural world or I can choose to draw life out of the spiritual world. I can choose to draw life out of my home address physically or I can choose to draw life from my spiritual address. And I am learning more and more, particularly as I... They, people keep rebuking me for saying, Pastor, don't say you're old. As I am maturing, so I ignore the long hair the receding gum line and hairline and all that I am maturing and beginning to understand that everything my source for everything must come from him otherwise it's temporal it doesn't last and to make these things happen, they have to come in, into alignment with the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, nothing just happens. I listened to a message several years ago when everything in my life was, was falling apart, and I'll never forget it. Every once in a while you hear a sermon that you never forget. And, and I was listening to Jake's preach, and he preached on nothing just happens. And it changed Jill and I's approach to life, that, that one message. Because most, too, not most, too many Christians are sitting back waiting on God to do something. When the truth of the matter is, God's already done it and provided for what He wants you to do. He is now waiting on you to do something so He can move through you. 
So get off your spiritual, lazy boy chair and begin to do something. We have to come into alignment. We have to do things God's way. Now, years ago, I was thinking about this when, when I was studying over this. Year, years ago, Lauren was just a baby. That's how long ago it was. Jill and I had gone out. And we were a young family. Didn't have, didn't have any money. Pastor in a small church plant in, in, in a little bitty town. And God was taking good care of us. But you just didn't go buy furniture. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, you know what I mean? And if you did, it was a discount kind that, that when you sat down in it, you just went right onto the floor when, when you sat down. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking Oh, I'm talking to the right people here. You, you know what I'm talking about. Well, electronics were just becoming the big thing. You know, the, the, the VCRs and the VCR recorders and the, and the big VCR camcorders. And, and they were coming out with larger screen TVs that were this wide in the back, you know, and, and not that wide in the front. And we were getting some of these things. We didn't have any place to put them. So we decided we was going to get us one of those fancy entertainment systems. I mean, in, in, entertainment um, cabinets. But we couldn't afford one of the good ones. And the prefab stuff was just coming out. And we went to a store, and we, we saw this, this really nice, big, prefab entertainment system cabinet. And, and Jill and I said, you know, we, we really need that. You know how you can justify things. Yeah. We, re- we really need that. And, 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 and we bought it. And we brought it home in two huge boxes that were so heavy, it was all I could do to get them in. I opened those two boxes up. There must have been at least 300 pieces of board and hardware and screws and bolts. And I opened both of them up and I went, no, actually I didn't at that time. I, I, I just glanced over the, I glanced over the instructions. And being the kind of man that I am, I said, piece of cake. Piece of cake. Three hours later, three hours later, I had what resembled what was on the picture. But I couldn't get some of the shelves in. None of the slides would work. And it wasn't stable. It would go back and forth. And I knew I had left a few parts out at the time because I couldn't figure out where they went. But I thought, these things aren't important. They're just, you know, it's just a rod this way and just a, a little piece here and a little corner piece there. But it was totally unusable. So I went back and read the instructions more closely this time. And to my chagrin, I realized that some of those pieces that I didn't understand where they went and didn't take the time to understand where they were supposed to go were actually supposed to go in one of the first two or three steps of putting the whole thing together. (laughs) And after a while of finagling, you all know what finagling is, don't you? You've never been there in your life, I know. You, 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 y'all sitting there laughing. You, 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 you've never done that, I know. Uh, you, you've never done that with your life. Piece of cake, I got this Christian thing. Then you get down the road a little bit and everything's shaky. Stuff isn't working like it's supposed to. You, you, you need... To go back more closely. <laughs> and what I found out was there was no fixing it without taking it completely, totally apart and putting those seemingly little unimportant pieces 
in the right places. So four hours later, I am standing in front of what now is a functional entertainment center. And I ain't happy about it. (laughs) Everything could have been saved if we would have come into alignment. Now, kingdom. The word alignment means linear or orderly arrangement. The The positioning of something, notice this, for proper performance. That's what alignment does. For the gearheads in here, when your car is out of alignment, and for the ladies that are in here, if your car is out of alignment and it's pulling to one side or to the other or it's doing this while you're going down the road, you need to take it in for an alignment. And when they align it, they straighten the tires just right so that the car doesn't pull either direction too far and it makes the car, you know, instead of driving like this, you can actually drive like this. You can just go down the road and do this kind of thing. That, that's what alignment does. Alignment makes things easier. It, you still got to do stuff. But alignment, order. Doing things in the right way makes things far, far easier. (sighs) The term kingdom, and that's what we're talking about, living from another world, is used in the Bible. This was fascinating. I never looked it up like this before. The word kingdom, the term kingdom, is used in the Bible 321 times. In the New American Standard. Now that's not what's interesting. What's interesting is this. Is that there's 120 mentions of it in the Old Testament. 121 times in the Old Testament. And 121 times. Wait a minute. 61 times. That's it. Because I'm trying to get to 320. Anyway, it's both equal in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I'm from Chihuahua. Forget the math. I never was good in math. (laughs) What I'm trying to say is, is the Old Testament is longer than the New Testament. And the word kingdom is found just as much in the New Testament as it is in the Old Testament. Now, what does kingdom mean? It means simply this. The realm where a sovereign king reigns. God's kingdom encompasses everything that we can see and everything that we can't. Man was given dominion in Genesis chapter 1 of the earth. That word dominion can mean a kingdom or rulership over a kingdom. That is what it means. So when God created the heavens and the earth, He gave the kingship... Of the earth to man. But man was to answer properly to the king. Man was given rulership, but God was going to be king. God was going to have, I mean, man was going to have the authority to rule over the earth, but only under the kingship of the Father. Are you with me? That's why everybody needs covering. I don't care who you are. Everybody needs somebody that they answer to above them. Well, I'm going to make you matter here in a minute or or whatever. Authority is always over you. So you answer to that which is above you. Military understands this. They understand authority and rank. We don't understand authority and rank in far too much of the church. Ooh, do I go there or not? Why not? I done got I done, done started waiting in. 
You see, here's.